If you're wondering what to expect in your next interview process for a data scientist or product analyst position, then this video will be useful for you. I'm going to talk about different stages of the interview process, uh, the difference between them for various seniority levels, a junior, senior or mid-level data scientist or product analyst, what kind of questions can you expect and how do you prepare for them the best and what kind of things can you learn about the company that you're applying to. Hi, my name is Anastasia and I'm a senior data scientist in a fintech startup working in Stockholm. While I was interviewing for product analyst and data scientist positions, I learned that it's not actually a hard process and there are only a few really critical things that you should do while preparing for it. So I'm going to share my experience with you right now. The interview process, of course, differs for different seniority levels and different expectations of the company on the role that they are that you're applying to. But in general, there are usually four steps of the interviewing process you should go through before receiving your offer. It starts with you getting a screening call from the recruiter or the hiring manager that's looking for a candidate for the particular open position. Then if you pass this step, you get an interview on-site or a video call interview where the hiring manager or your peer assesses your analytical skills and asks you more questions about your experience. If you pass this step, the next step is usually a technical interview, which can be done in different ways. You can have an online coding interview or an on-site interview where you have to real-time solve certain problems, or you might receive a case interview, which you're expected to do at home and present your results when you're on site or through video call. After you're done with your technical interview, if you were successful, of course, the last stage of the interviewing process is value interviews with peers, um, various stakeholders and senior leadership. During this process, you will get questions about how would you perform in various types of situations and the company will try to understand if you align with the company values and if you will be a good fit to work there pretty much. In my experience, this stage ranges between being a more of a sales pitch from the company where they know your qualifications and they really want to have you on board and an actual interview process where you're going to be asked a lot of questions about your qualifications, your experience and so on. The depth of the questions can vary between just very high level questions like what are you doing now? What are the current projects you're working on? What did you learn in the recent months or years working for the company you're working on right now? or what are your drives and interests in work, to a more specific questions about programming concepts, statistical concepts, various analytical concepts that you might be applying at your current job, or learning in a university if you're applying for a junior role. In general, it's not very easy to know what to expect on this stage because it differs between various companies depending on their size and thoroughness of the recruiters and who does the interview. I generally advise you to go to Glassdoor and look at the various questions that people post there that they receive in different stages of the interview. This is usually a very helpful resource, but it should be taken with a grain of salt because you don't know what is the experience of the people that were applying for this company and what are their qualifications. They might be really biased in how they describe the questions and their general experience. In general, there are three traits that successful candidates have during this stage. Number one is they're doing their research on the role and the various expectations that can come with this role. The second trait is that usually the successful candidates have a coherent and sometimes maybe even prepped story about what are they working on right now, what are they interested in learning and growing, and what is their value to the company they're working in. And the third trade of the successful candidates is that usually they ask a lot of questions about what are the ways of working in the company, what kind of projects the analytical team is currently working on, what kind of stakeholders will they have to interact with and so on. The reason it's so important is because you kind of get a, an idea of how driven they are to join the company. For example, they can ask a lot of questions about the ways of working or maybe they will ask a lot of questions about how you evaluate successful candidates or successful workers. Um, from this information, you can derive what is valuable for them while they're working, what kind of topics they're interested in, if they're interested in various specifications like machine learning or A-B testing. Remember that the whole interview process is not only for the potential employer to evaluate your skills and drive, but also for you to understand how interested you will be working in the company and how comfortable you will feel with various people that you meet along the whole interview process. Usually in this interview, you're going to be evaluated more broadly on your current experience. You're working with your peers or stakeholders, how are you handling different projects? And what's really important is your analytical skill set and mindset. 
this is your chance to learn more about the role in depth and you learn more about the manager you might have to work with and see whether you're finding this company as a good fit for you or not. What I see in the successful candidates at this stage is that they come really prepared to talk about their current experience, the projects that they are working on, whatever went well, whatever didn't, what kind of learnings they derived from it and what value can they bring to the table in the new role. Being able to talk through one or two recent projects that you worked on, different skills that you used, whether you used programming skills or statistical skills, maybe explaining in detail what kind of concept you worked with, maybe if you built some kind of tool or worked on some kind of analysis, explaining how this analysis went through, what kind of tools you used to achieve it and what value it brought to the company. You might get a few hypothetical questions about product performance evaluation. For example, if you're applying for a product analyst or a data scientist role, depending on the company that you are applying to, of course, and depending on the product that they have, you will receive questions like, how do we evaluate the performance of this new feature that we're adding to an app that we're working on? Or what kind of metrics would we use for understanding if our product performs well or not? How would you explain this to a technical and non-technical audience? And how would you present them to the senior leadership? Of course, this step of the process is really important, but you shouldn't be too worried. In general, hiring managers or your peers are really looking into finding characteristics that qualify you as a good employee. And um, if you're giving them just a little bit help with the prepared speech on what you worked on or with the prepared answers for various questions about analytical performance, they're going to be rooting for you. Now let's talk about the technical interview. This step usually is considered the most important, of course, because for a product analyst or data scientist, your actual skill set, your hard skills are really important. They're enabling you to do the job that you're expected to be doing. And it's really critical for the company when they invest a lot of money in you to see whether your skills are matching their expectations or not. Sometimes the technical interview can come before the hiring manager interview, but it really depends on the company and on the process itself. And it doesn't really matter in general, technical interview will have the same types of structure. There are different types of the technical interviews that I've encountered and that I've conducted. In general, they're split between real-time and on-site and homework. The real-time interview can be more stressful, of course, and it's harder to prepare to, but it's usually also more shallow and easier questions. During the real-time coding analytical interview, usually you get questions about SQL and the programming language of your choice. What I see mostly in the successful candidates is that they're really comfortable to think while they're speaking. When you receive an explanation of the task that you need to do real time, uh, first thing you should try to do is to understand if you get it correctly, if all of your assumptions that you're making while solving a task are following what the interviewer expects you to do. After you ask certain follow-up questions, if it's relevant, the best thing you can do is start thinking out loud. There are a few different really good resources on how to do coding interview while thinking out loud from Google that I will link down below. But in general, my advice is to go to an SQL coding questions or Python or R coding questions and try to go through them while speaking, maybe to yourself, maybe to your friends, maybe to someone who works with you or someone who has the same skill set. At this point, it's really a crucial skill in those interviews to be able to talk while you're thinking. It's a really hard one to achieve as well. But even if your solution to the problem that you're trying to achieve is not correct or going the wrong way, if you're, think if you're talking while you're thinking and explaining all the decisions that you're making to the interviewer, they can try to help you and guide you in the right direction. And in most cases, it doesn't matter if the first solution that you try to go for is um, not exactly correct. What matters is the dialogue that you can have between yourself and the interviewer and your ability to pick up on their hints or suggestions for you to go to the right solution. The second general type of the technical interviews are case interviews that you receive from a recruiter and that you have time to do at home. Now, this is actually my most favorite type of the technical interview. It gives a really good idea about the product that the company is working on, and it allows for a lot of follow-up questions depending on the seniority of the candidate to discuss the different metrics that they try using, different statistical methods and approaches that they used um, 
while solving the case. Usually during the case interview, you will receive a data set and some explanations of what the data set consists of and what's expected for you. The amount of effort that you might have to put in those kind of case interview may range from like a few hours to 20, 30 hours, depending on what is your engagement, how willing you are to work in this company, uh, what are your skill sets, what do you know, how to process the data or not. Usually for those interviews, you're also expected to give a presentation of your findings and learnings and uh, the tools and skills you used to get to those learnings during an uh, interview process on site with your peer or senior peer. Usually you're expected to use your SQL skills to retrieve the data, your coding skills to mingle with the data and derive learnings, and your stakeholder management and communication skills to present your learnings to the audience. At this stage, you will be invited on site to present your findings to technical and non-technical audiences. And you can expect questions ranging from various product metrics to the reason you wrote the code in a certain way. What I see most successful candidates doing at this stage is asking follow-up questions if they don't understand specifically the tasks, always stating their assumptions for the analysis, having clear and readable code and explaining why they wrote it in a certain way. The tip for the extra successful candidates is that they're usually going beyond what's expected from them in the task. This can range from them actually doing additional analysis to them just suggesting what kind of analysis they can do if they would have more data. Depending on how much time you invest in the process, this stage can really give your employer a glimpse on how engaged you are with working on a certain product. And for you at this stage, you really can get a good idea of what kind of skills and tools are required to do the job. Now you were successful with your technical interview and it's time for the last step of the process, which is value interviews. This can be just one or several different interviews with various stakeholders. It can be your peers. It can be stakeholders that you will have to work with, for example, product managers or UX researchers. And usually there will be at least one person from the senior leadership of the company. The goal there is to figure out whether you're going to be a good fit for the company based on your values and your motivations. And for you to also understand whether the people you might be working with are aligning with your expectations and aligning with the comfortable ways of working for you. Now, these interviews um, or interview, depending on how many you have, of course, and with whom, can be very different. Usually those are the interviews where you get various questions about what are your strengths and weaknesses, how would you act in certain situations, what are your interests and motivations at work, how would you solve certain problems, and so on. What helps when preparing for this interview step is searching for the company values if they're available somewhere on the internet. In general, those values are something like you're really striving to learn, you're humble, you're curious, you're interested in success, you're not afraid to fail and so on. So if you find what those values are, what helps to prepare a few stories from your work or from personal life to highlight how you align with these values. For example, if one of the values is not being afraid to fail, you might talk about the project that you worked on before that didn't go as planned, how you tried to solve the problem and what you learned on the way. Generally, I think this step of the interviews is balancing between you being somewhat prepared and able to coherently talk about your experiences and your motivations and quite a lot of luck. Since this step is a bit more subjective than the others where you're expected to show your specific technical skills or fit for the role, here it's more important for you to focus on the soft skills, to the ability of presenting yourself, um, sort of selling yourself, um, but not too much. Talk about your shortcomings, your failures and what you learn from them, and talk about your general motivations and what gives you drive to work. I think the most common question that gives a good explanation for this stage is something like what makes you happy in the morning when you go to work? Or for example, you had a very good day at work, you come home very happy, what did you do during this day? It is very subjective, it really depends on the person that you meet on the other side of the table, so you kind of need to use some psychological skills to understand what's important for them if you really want to try to fit your answer towards what they're expecting you to answer. I think at this stage it's really important to mention that it's valuable to be honest. If you are not really honest with yourself or with the person who is interviewing you, you might not actually be a really good fit for the company. Maybe they have very different expectations than what you do and maybe you're not even going to be happy working there. Overall, during the whole process, I think the most important thing to remember is that 
The interviewer is never against you. They are usually trying to help you and guide you towards the answers that they want to hear from you. Try to see the interviewer as someone who's on your team because usually they are as interested in your success as you are. They always want to fill the position and find the right candidate. So hopefully this was helpful and good luck to your next interview process.